Right now on ABC 10 News at 4 o'clock, breaking news as the man who assassinated Robert Kennedy is granted parole. We're live with what led up to the decision to release Sirhan Sirhan. And we're learning the names of some of the U.S. service members killed in the suicide bombing in Kabul. The latest details as the evacuation of Afghanistan continues. And after six checkpoints and hours in a Taliban base, a Poway family is home safely tonight. Their recount of the harrowing experience. ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. We are learning the names of the service members killed yesterday in a suicide bombing attack near Kabul's airport in Afghanistan. The explosion killed at least 13 service members and at least 200 Afghans. According to the White House, the U.S. military and coalition flights managed to evacuate more than 12,000 people the day of the attack. In all, 105,000 people have been evacuated from Afghanistan since August 14th. And yesterday's attack killed 11 Marines and a Navy corpsman as well as an Army soldier. And today we are learning more about some of those service members. At least two were from Southern California. ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is joining us now live. And Mimi, so many hearts are heavy in our community right now. Hi, Kimberly. Yeah, absolutely. And people have been coming here to Camp Pendleton to this growing memorial here to leave flowers and notes, of course, to show support for the Marines in Afghanistan and also honor the lives lost in that attack. While the Department of Defense has not officially identified the 13 service members, relatives and loved ones have confirmed several names with ABC News. We know of a few Marines that were from or stationed in Southern California, including Kareem Nakui, who was previously stationed here at Camp Pendleton. But from Norco, just a couple of hours away, he was a Norco High graduate. Officials from the city of Norco say he survived by his parents and siblings, and his name will be put up on a memorial wall. Wyoming's governor also confirmed Riley McCollum was killed in the attack. It appears McCollum was stationed here locally as well and had a child on the way with his wife. We also know of Hunter Lopez from Riverside. His parents worked for the Riverside County Sheriff's Department and he hoped to become a deputy after returning from deployment. According to the department, a lot of heavy hearts across the country and the county today. Marine Corps veteran John Price stopped by the growing memorial outside of Camp Pendleton to pay his respects this afternoon. It hurts. Should have never happened. I was stationed here at this base years ago, and I have a connection with these Marines. And, uh, it's just tragic. And we are learning the identities of more service members killed in that attack. That is on the homepage of our website, 10news.com. There will also be a candlelight vigil in Pacific Beach tonight to honor those fallen troops. We're live from Camp Pendleton. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Tragic for sure. Thank you, Mimi. And a Poway family is back home tonight after a harrowing escape from Afghanistan. As ABC 10 News reporter Michael Chen explains, they got through six Taliban checkpoints before enduring nine hours of uncertainty at a Taliban base. Yasin Ruiz, his wife and two little girls, arrived in Afghanistan in late July to visit family. On August 15th, as Ruiz was packing up for a flight in a few days, a family member rushed in with news of the Taliban takeover. I feel that it's end for me. Ruiz and his family are Hasara, a long persecuted ethnic minority in Afghanistan. Ruiz had also been living in San Diego with a refugee visa since 2016. They think that I am an American person, so they persecute me. Ruiz knew they had to get out quickly. A friend put him in contact with someone at the U.S. Embassy. Last Friday, Ruiz was told to be at the airport south gate the next morning, but amid the crowded confusion, they ended up at the wrong gate. The next day, the embassy contacted him with a new location. His family's final trek would go through some six Taliban checkpoints. Most of them, they had M16. Passing through each one, a frightening uncertainty. Because we have passport, probably they should, they should us. All my body was like, like cold. This is the end of my life. As the soldiers let his family pass, Rawish heard this. They're not Muslim. We don't need this kind of dirty people. He says while he is Muslim, the soldiers believed his U.S. visa tainted his beliefs. After the checkpoints, his family and more than 100 other people were herded into a dirt lot patrolled by Taliban soldiers. So we thought that, 
okay, we're, we're in prison. His panic ended after nine hours when the Afghans were allowed to leave. Ruiz's family walked two miles to the airport. We know some Marines. I feel, oh my God, we're good. We're good now. On Monday, Ruiz's family made it back home. It's a kind of uh, dream. I can't believe this. Michael Chen, ABC 10 News. And Ruiz says that he remains fearful for the rest of his family still in Kabul. None of them qualify for an American visa. And ABC 10 News has also been in touch with a San Diegan who says his family has already tried and failed to get out of Afghanistan several times. Faisal Sarbaland has 16 family members stuck in Kabul, including his mother and father. His biggest fear is they won't get out before the U.S. military's evacuation deadline this coming Tuesday. So they are very scared. One, the you know, them being a target, and two, um, this in this short amount of time, I don't think that, you know, we can evacuate them from from that country unless we uh, we extend that date. Faisal says he believes that his family is a target for the Taliban. He fled the country after working with the U.S. military for five years. His father was a police officer in Kabul and his siblings are engineers and they work with American or U.S. affiliated agencies. He says that he's tried five times to get them out of Afghanistan. He hopes the U.S. Embassy in Kabul will make contact soon. We're learning more about the possible repercussions of the attack at the Kabul airport that killed American service members and other civilians. ISIS-K is claiming responsibility. They're a subgroup of ISIS and operate in both Afghanistan and Pakistan. ISIS-K fighters are more extreme competitors to the Taliban and enemies of America. We're talking about groups that will um, hide their weaponry in, in schools or, or hospitals, that they, they, will, they, they have no compulsion about forcing a, a decision of, of um, bombing a, 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 a target that normally we would not bomb because of, um, because of our own morals and, and standing. Robert Griffin is the Dean of the College of Emergency Preparedness, Homeland Security and Cybersecurity. It was formed after 9-11. The school provided us the video you're looking at here. Griffin worked in the Department of Homeland Security beforehand and before that worked in local emergency management during the 9-11 attack at the Pentagon. One thing that, the, that we need, as Americans need to understand, okay, the, the, these are not stupid people, all right? And, and just because they don't have the type of military that we have, just because they don't have the satellites and, and, and the, the jet fighters and the stealth technologies and the missiles, they're incredibly patient. They're willing to make sacrifices that, that a, a lot of or, other organizations don't. Griffin believes the ISIS-K attack confirms with the Taliban in control of Afghanistan, the country is a terrorist safe haven threat and a possible hub for global radicalization, a place where followers can come to safely train, many times with American weapons left behind. I'm really concerned about um, you know, things like the, the continued opium trade that's coming out of as Afghanistan as a, as a mechanism of, of both continuing to weaken Western democracies with the, with the, with the spread of, of, of illegal drugs, um, but it's a funding mechanism for them. Griffin says that U.S. intel on the ground is key to fighting ISIS-K and staying ahead of radicalization of American citizens. After more than a half century behind bars today, Sirhan Sirhan, the man convicted of assassinating Senator Robert F. Kennedy in 1968, was granted parole. ABC 10 News reporter Rena Nakano is joining us from Donovan State Prison in Otay Mesa, where Sirhan is right now. Rena. Hey, Kim. Yeah, this was his 16th parole hearing, and he kept getting denied for his previous attempts because the commissioner said that he just was not showing any signs of remorse. But today, the commissioner, as well as the senator's son, said that he should be released. 77-year-old Sirhan Sirhan sat in front of a computer waving to the participants of his virtual parole hearing. Sirhan has been behind bars since assassinating Senator Robert F. Kennedy at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles in 1968. His last 15 parole requests were not granted because of lack of remorse and persisting anger issues. This was the first time prosecutors did not attend the hearing seeking to keep Sirhan in prison. Now today, Sirhan said he does 
feel remorse for his actions and added in the last two years, he took 20 self-help classes and has become, quote, a humble, balanced man. After being stabbed in the neck by an inmate at Donovan State Prison here in 2019, Sirhan said he had been worried about his safety. So right now, his focus is to get parole and after his move into transitional housing, his goal is to reunite with his ailing brother who lives in Pasadena. The senator's son, Douglas Kennedy, said in the hearing today, quote, I am grateful today to see him as a human being worth, worthy of compassion and love. I do wish him well in his life and rehabilitation. Now, getting parole does not automatically mean that Sailor Han will be released. There is a 120 day period where the parole board will have to take a look at this case. And then after that, it goes to the governor. The governor then has five options. He could either uphold, reverse, modify, send it back for a full board for reconsideration or take no action. Live out here in Otay Mesa, I'm Rena Nakano, ABC 10 News.